Hey everyone, Jan here, coding with Jan.com. So today, we are going to be covering how to sit on a beach, sipping cocktails, while money keeps rolling into your bank account. Uh, wrong presentation. <laughs> I actually meant to say, today we're going over how to come up with great Shopify app ideas in order to build a business that not only requires work upfront, but also ongoing, yeah, but still has the potential to grow and might possibly turn into another revenue stream over time. Just to set the right kinds of expectations. And more specifically, let me take a look at my notes. We are going over why having a good app idea is important and what does good even mean to begin with. Then different ways to accumulate app ideas. And lastly, how you can evaluate your ideas based on our definition of what good actually means. Should be quite interesting. And now let's have a look. All right, so when we are building an app from scratch, we are taking some risks. This is either going to be in the form of capital that we invest, or it's going to be in the form of the time that we spend on the project. Yeah, because if the app idea flops completely, all efforts are pretty much wasted. And if the idea only checks a few of the right boxes, then it might kind of work. But life might also be a bit harder than it would have to be otherwise. So I actually think having the right idea or having a good idea is pretty foundational. Now, when I say it like that, the engineer in me screams because good, like what does good even mean? It's not very specific. It's not well defined. It's not something tangible. It's not something we can measure. And maybe I'm just a bit too German here. <laughs> but anyways, that's why I try to came up with a list of eight criteria that we can compare our app against. And small disclaimer, the list is based on what I find important. And this might be different for you. You might have your own ideas here. But that's also how I evaluated all the app ideas that you guys submitted after my last video announcing the series. More of that in a second. But yeah, not to waste your time, let's just go over the list really quick. Here are the things that I'd be paying attention to. All right, so the first one I'd be looking at is TAM, the total addressable market. And that is to say, how many Shopify stores could potentially use our app? Like, what is, what is the total amount of customers we could potentially have? And if your app is only relevant for Shopify Plus clients, we might be looking at less than 5%, probably more like two or 3%. I don't have exact data here. But if on the other hand, your app idea is useful for anyone who has remotely to do with fashion or clothing, we might be looking at 50 or 60% or even above here. So it's kind of like an educated guess because of incomplete data. But yeah, that's the first thing I'd be looking at. Next one on the list is importance of the problem four stores in that segment, like four stores that could be potentially interested. And questions I'd be asking here are, is it a make or break feature? For example, if, if you're selling event tickets, you will likely need a calendar. So this is pretty much a must have app. Or if we're talking invoices, that's a legal requirement in some places. So it's also pretty important. But if on the other hand, we're talking about a good looking slideshow or something like that, that's more like a nice to have and it's probably a bit less urgent. So that's how you rate this one. Next criteria, search volume. And this is also relative to the segment. So I'm not trying to think about absolute search volume. I'm trying to think along the lines of, would someone who currently has that problem search for a solution on their own? And if we take invoices, for example, legal requirement, many people would search for that. If we take speed optimization or loading time optimization, that's a nice to have and many people would love that, but at the same time, they might not even consider to search for that on Google or on the App Store because it might just not be on their radar. So this is how you can kind of guess this one. And you can also take some public data points into consideration like Google search volume, forum entries, um, YouTube video views. So they might give you a very good idea whether or not people are searching for these types of problems. Okay, number four, are there any other marketing opportunities? So apart from search traffic, are there any Facebook groups where I could promote my app? Could I use my own YouTube channel? Um, let's say we have an app for only Shopify Plus merchants and they wouldn't search for it. It might be hard to get in front of these, right? Um, or if I have an app that's potentially interesting for everyone, I might even be able to do influencer marketing with influencers in the e-commerce space. Um, and that's also one thing where I feel I would have a personal advantage because I get quite a few cold emails asking me to promote their software or services or whatever. And most of them are just terribly bad. They, you can instantly tell that these are copy paste templates. They ask me to get on calls and whatnot, which I don't love. Um, 
So yeah, if you just avoid these things, your chances of collaborating are way higher in my opinion. And just recently, we also did a promotion with um, the Tech with Tim channel, which has well over a million subscribers promoting free mode. Um, so I guess, yeah, it's, it's way more about how you approach these people and that you have a product that is perceived valuable by their audience. But yeah, that's a side tension, um, but just goes to show how I try to think about other marketing opportunities apart from just search traffic. Okay, next. Is there a clear ROI for the merchant that is return on investment? And that means, is there an easy way if someone pays for my app to see how much money the app saved or how much money the app made back? And if, for example, I had an upsell app making an extra $1,000 per month and it only costs 50, that's like a no-brainer. Like everyone would be happy to pay that. But if instead I had an invoice app, legal requirement, then people might be wondering why does it have to cost 50 per month? It's just invoices. And the answer is because it saves you time and it's also a legal requirement. So it saves you from getting sued or fined. That's how you justify the pricing. But that's one additional layer of abstraction and therefore it's a little harder to comprehend. So that's why we can ask the question, is there a clear and easy to understand ROI for the end user on whatever they pay for our app? Okay, next one on my list is technical simplicity. This is like, how difficult is it gonna be to actually build the app? And you can look at this in two different ways. You could say more complex is better because then it's harder and there's gonna be less competition. But for my very first app, I'd rather prefer something simple because then I can prototype faster, iterate rapidly. And right now I would rather build three simple apps as opposed to one that's more complex. Um, yeah, because I'm sure there are flaws in my thought process, in my workflows, and that's why it's called simplicity, because for me right now, the more or the simpler, the better. All right, number seven, low competition. And that's kind of self-explanatory. For me right now, I'm looking for apps where there are little to no existing solutions out there. You could also go the other route and make the other case that a lot of competition means that there's a lot of demand and you might be able to get some of that market share if your app improves on the existing solutions, let's say. But right now, as I said, this is gonna be my first app, so I would rather not compete. And uh, yeah, therefore, low competition, the less, the better. Okay, last one on the list is then low support demand. Um, like how many people will have questions? And I guess if you have a more complex app, then naturally more people will have questions. Um, so that's one consideration. And since free mode is still my main business, I just can't devote full-time hours to this right now. Um, so yeah, I would rather prefer less questions. And I'm also considering whether the app only acts on the back end, which is the same for every store, or if it also has elements that go into the front end, because then it has to integrate with a lot of themes. So there might be a friction point. Um, yeah, just considerations in terms of the overall support volume. All right, so far so good. Now we have a better understanding of what makes an app actually good, in quotes. Um, and now the question might become, how do you even come up with new ideas? And tons of different ways there. First of all, if you haven't seen the interview with Matt so far, I highly recommend you catch up on that because there was a lot of good information in there. Um, but let me also bring some other sources of inspiration your way. So for example, you can freelance for a while and just see what kind of problems occur repeatedly across different clients. Uh, you can check existing apps and think if there's a way to improve upon them. Uh, you can check other content management systems like WordPress and just look for the most successful plugins and then do the same thing for Shopify. Um, you can check out the Shopify forum, Facebook groups, Reddit. You can also go to e-commerce meetups and talk to merchants in person or to other developers and then ask them for their ideas. So you just have to be willing to put in the work and do the research, but there are tons of opportunities out there. Now for me personally, I had two ideas in mind going into this, um, but then I also decided to reach out to you as an audience. So we had a type form up for several days and almost collected 50 responses, it was 46 to be precise. And your input has been amazing, actually way better than my ideas. Um, so first of all, thanks so much for everyone who took the time. I really appreciate that. And by the time that you're watching this, I will have already sent the 500 US dollars as token of my appreciation to the person who suggested the winning idea. And just before making it public, I will need a bit of time in advance because barrier of entry is actually quite low. So I wanna get things rolling and build them out before making it public, hope that makes sense. All right, last but not least, now you have all these beautiful app ideas flying around and you have a pretty good understanding of 
yeah, what good app actually means. Now the last question becomes, how can you evaluate all your ideas? How I went about this is by using what is called a decision-making matrix that's commonly used in engineering. And you would just list all the ideas you have, like idea A, B, C, D, and so on and so forth. And then you list them against all the criteria that you defined. So in our case, we had like 50 ideas, 50 rows, and then eight criteria, that's eight columns. And then you just rate every idea for every criteria on a scale from one to 10. And this can be based on your educated guesses. It can be based on data points you have. And if one, one of the criteria is of special importance to you, for example, total addressable market, you could also introduce some weights. So then the score or the rating for total addressable market would be multiplied by 1.5 or two. Um, but for simplicity, I didn't do that. I counted all of the criteria as equally as important. And then you can just go ahead and add up all the numbers per idea. So you end up with one score per idea. And then it's just like in a video game, high score wins. That's going to be the best idea. So yeah, that's all the secret. That's how we can quantify intangible qualities such as good app. Like there's no way we can directly measure that, but we can come up with proxy measurements. In this case, our criteria, and then just rate them on a scale from one to 10. Isn't that beautiful? Who wants to tell me now college is a scam, huh? <laughs> uh, anyways, topic for a different video. So that's all I have for today. We've seen one way of defining the term good app. We've briefly touched on different ways to come up with new app ideas. And we've also seen how we can evaluate them using a decision-making matrix. Really hope you learned something new and make sure to stay tuned, AKA make sure to subscribe, AKA make sure to share this with your children. <laughs> AKA, let me know your favorite private API key in the comments. Um, anyways, just have an amazing rest of your day. I'll catch you next one.